We are now 14 days to the elections. It just come very quickly. Um, just a case of two weeks and elections will be upon us. There's a lot that the Electoral Commission obviously has to do to ensure that we have a free, fair, but also peaceful election. There's a lot of preparation that is already happening at the Electoral Commission. Um, but there's something that also happened bordering on data protection over the weekend that a lot of you talked about. It has to do with the publication of the voters register for the first time online. There is no indication if this came from the Electoral Commission itself, but it was available somewhere. You could type your details in it and you could find your name and additional uh, details in there. It generated a fair bit of controversy online as well. Many talked about it. The Electoral Commission is yet to speak openly about it, but tonight they've issued a statement. We're um, debunking some allegations regarding the uh, special voting relating to security agencies. But there's a whole gamut of things that the Electoral Commission is involved in as preparations, uh, I guess, finalized for the elections itself, the political parties themselves. We're going to be talking about that because exactly two weeks to go is a conversation you want to have, assessing where we are with the preparations towards the December 7th election. So what do we know so far? We know that the uh, data protection is uh, deepening as the voters register issues that come up. Uh, we, we also know the EC is yet to explain this. As, as we know, we understand that the EC is planning to hold a news conference on this. Now, there are concerns that the EC's actions amounts to some breach of the data protection law. The data protection agency, ACL says, they don't see any problems there. And there are also claims of uh, hand printed ballot papers already in circulation. The EC uh, has denied that also. Questions about the EC chair's assertion that there are 40,000 uh, polling stations contrary to the EC's communication to the political parties that there are 33,000 polling stations. This is something that the NDC uh, had touched on as well. So what exactly is it when it comes to the number of polling stations that we have? The EC says the strong room in Accra uh, will be collating results from regions and not from constituencies. This is a change in the way things are done this year. It's also because of the law. Uh, some education on this area is critical. Now, there are questions about the integrity mechanisms to ensure a flawless collation. I mean, this is something that the EC clearly at, at, uh, articulates is well on top of. In fact, if you read a recent CDD report that did a survey on people's confidence in the Electoral Commission, the Electoral Commission scores very highly when it comes to uh, the trust people had in its ability to do, to do its work. And so it's way up there. Uh, next to the president who scored a, a significant confidence uh, margin of around 70%, the EC just below that 60 uh, plus percentage points. Questions about whether the EC will accept manual verification if biometric verification fails. A lot of questions, of course, that had come up uh, with 14 days to go. Recently, there's been uh, agitations of deletion of about some uh, 4,000 names from the register. There are questions also about uh, whether those people have been informed that their names have been deleted. The questions also surrounding, uh, we also know these allegations from uh, other men of political parties of time printed ballots that have also emerged. As you can imagine, with two weeks ago, you hear a lot of these concerns emerging. The EC says it will declare results in 24 hours. I mean, that has also come up. Um, but what mechanisms have they, put in, have they put in place to ensure this indeed happens? Questions about what happens in the event of a runoff is also uh, key. Uh, questions about whether there are uh, adequate security and, uh, of course, protection for the distribution process itself uh, on election day is a key thing that always comes up. Now, the, well, this is a 14-day countdown officially. To the elections and here on PMS, we've been doing a lot of these conversations with the political parties, analyzing some of the key regions uh, for you as we count down. We begin today setting the tone for this with the uh, conversation with the parties and uh, uh, the, some of the key stakeholders, and they're just getting a clearer picture of where we are when it comes to the preparations for the elections itself. On the back of all the concerns that we've seen 
uh, get him some clarity on them. Stay with me. When we return, we'll get into the matters that are absolutely important with 14 days to go. Thank you for joining us here on the PM Express. And of course, with 14 days to the election, so we are assessing the uh, pre-election environment is key. And tonight we intend to do just that. Uh, we have uh, joining us for this conversation the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, the National Coordinator, uh, Mr. Albert Ahin, uh, joins us uh, tonight for this conversation. Also, also joining us uh, tonight is the uh, Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, uh, Peter Boamo Otokuno, also joining us via Zoom. Um, we had uh, agreed to speak with Evans Nemako of the MPP, who had agreed to be here. Uh, he's not here. We've been trying to reach him, uh, not being successful yet uh, to, to reach him, although he's agreed. Um, so but that's that's all we have. We'll be looking also at the security situation uh, pre the, the election itself. There's a lot that has come in for conversation in that particular area as well. The, I know the MPP, the NDC, in fact, recently met national security uh, and were given a briefing on, on, on these issues as well. And so it will be interesting to hear their thoughts on that. Uh, I want to start first with the Codeo. They recently uh, published a pre-election uh, report uh, into the, I guess, the, what existed in the in, in Ghana in terms of preparations going to the, to the elections. And I'm delighted to be joining uh, to be joined by Albert Ahim. Mr. Ahim, thank you for your time here on uh, PM Express and uh, Mr. Tokuno as well. Thanks for having us, Ivan. Great. Uh, let me begin with Mr. Ahin. Mr. Ahin, give me a sense of the of what you self have, what you've picked up. You used to work with the EC. You know what happens with uh, 14 days to the polls. Um, in your assessment of the of Cordeo, um, where are we? Are we ready? Viewers, so sorry. Um, I was at the IPAC meeting the other day, that is last week, and the EC gave a rundown of activities leading to the uh, election. Apart from that, we also have our long term observers on the field. They haven't come out with the November report yet, but at least for October, uh, September and October, we have this report about how the EC is busily going about their preparation. It came out the other day that uh, they are about 97% ready, which, you know, goes to say that at least the sensitive and the non-sensitive materials are almost in the region. When we met, I think they were just left with the presidential ballot that was supposed to be sent to the various regions. And uh, as I'm speaking to you right now, this has also been done. What has happened is that most of the items are being sent, especially the non-sensitive ones, according to them, are being sent to the field. The sensitive ones are the registers, the ink, and the, the barrel papers, which are being kept at the various armories of the, of the police stations in the region. They have also started training seriously their pool personnel. The police staff are being trained. You know they are going to be important. I think they have about 38,000 police stations. So when you multiply that by six per center, then you have a number of them to be trained. So they have started doing that. Mm. So the aggregation of all this, you know, tells you that they are poised and they want to really deliver. So from the point of view of Kodeo, I think uh, I will share in their joy because uh, it is just nice to have uh, at least two weeks to the election and then you have all your sensitive materials all being ready to be dispatched or if not despised at all to the various uh, destinations. So maybe kudos for them. Yeah, I mean, so uh, we, not, just a 97% is what it, they, they told you, 97% uh, prepared. Yeah, that's what they say, 97% of it. Okay. And I'm sure they were talking about the fact that the presidential ballot had not been finished. Okay. But I think as I'm talking to you right now, the presidential ballots have also been printed and they are either there or maybe on their way again to the various destinations. Okay. I mean, we, we, we'd agree to speak to the Electoral Commission as well. They indicated just tonight 
that there is a press conference tomorrow that uh, they are set to hold on this these matters and they would not want to preempt it but they had agreed to speak to us earlier uh, but uh, it's important for those who are watching to be updated definitely sorry, i'm not hearing you sir uh, i'm sorry i'm just talking about the importance to constantly update uh, with 14 days to go um with your experience mr ahin if what all that remains is the presidential ballots going to the regions um, you know the logistical issues involved. Uh, 14 days to go. Um, the EC is 3% shy of 100% preparation. Um, how does this compare with previous elections, would you say? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing. Sorry, can you hear me? Two, two things. Can you come again? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. I was just wondering where we are with the EC right now. 97% prepared. The, what is left is the distribution of uh, presidential ballots. If you compare it to previous elections, um, how would you compare with previous elections, being there yourself? Well, that is, um, I said from the word go when I started talking to you that this is good. If you have your ballots ready and you have about two weeks to go, mm. it means um, you are uh, very much ahead of time. And you'll be able to even check if there are any problems with the ballot. You can quickly do some printing and set it right before the DD. So it, it's a good omen. It's a good omen. And um, it shows maybe how we have been learning from our past mistakes. Okay. So if we have about two weeks to the election, everything is ready. That's a, a plus for the easier day. I mean, let me bring in um, the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mr. Tokuno. Are you, do you share in the confidence of Kodeo and, of course, the Electoral Commission on where they are with 14 days to go? Well, um, unfortunately, um, I'm completely, uh, on the contrary, uh, not share in any confidence um, as, as has been expressed by Mr. Ahin. I was at the IPAC meeting uh, with Mr. Ahin, and um, it will be an exercise. Uh, a futility for one to enjoy in self-glorification and self-praise, as was the case by the Electoral Commission. They just came to praise themselves and comparing themselves to records that do not exist. And I thought that uh, that is not the essence of the work of the Electoral Commission. The work of the Electoral Commission is to make sure that they deliver a credible you know, election results. Preparation, you can be prepared, but what is the quality of the preparation that is most important because as we have made the point this is supposed to be an exercise that carries some level of integrity and the credibility and integrity of the process is 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 imbibed or is embedded in the activities and the actions that the specific actions that you put in the process and every step of the way we think that the process uh, has been uh, uh, barely flawed and that makes it very very you know uh, uh, precarious uh, for us uh, in these elections. I mean, <clears throat> we have raised very genuine concerns even after the last IPAC meeting, where we made the point that you cannot come to us to do this. Then you tell us that you have identified some number of people who are not on the register, but they are eligible voters, mm -hmm. and that you are going to create some list and send it to the polling stations or send it to the, 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 the constituencies so that we will go and follow up and identify who and who is a, a, a registered voter, but it's not on the certified register that you have given us. I think that is a blot on the integrity of the Electoral Commission to have created a register and issue a certified register. What certified register means is that it is the final register you are sending into the post. Now you are telling us that there is another register apart from the certified register. So for the first time, we are going into the elections with two sets of registers. Now, the other important thing is that if you look at the CI-127 and the provisions that provide for the processes for the voting, they do not provide for any other extra list that will be provided at the police station. So you realize that the BVD device that they have brought in, even the manual verification is embedded on the device. Now, this extra people, 541, who are not on the main register, who are going to cast their votes, they will not be captured by the device. And so they would have to re-engineer another extra manual process 
to uh, you know uh, uh, verify them, and I think that is very problematic. There again, we have had very uh, serious issues with the uh, register and even the special voting. Last uh, 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 meeting, we raised it that in some parts of the eastern region and some parts of the Ashanti region, a list we are almost finalizing to send to the EC. Some individuals who are in the special voters list, meaning they are going to vote on, vote on 1st December, are also on the main certified voters uh, register at the polling, various polling stations. That means that they can also vote on the 7th of December. You cannot have the case where an individual would be found in a position where, given the chance, would be able to vote in the two different elections on the 1st of December and on the 7th of December. We have raised this point very, very strongly. And clearly, if that is the case, then the entire credibility of the register has been undermined. And those are the issues that we, 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 we should look at. So, it appears that so, we are so much in a hurry to praise the, the, the Electoral Commission. And we, appear, we appear to have lost the audio there uh, to um, Mr... Hello, oh, I, my, yes. my audio is on. Yes, my audio okay. Is I, can on. Hear you. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah. Yes, so I was making the point that it appears that we are so much in a hurry to praise the Electoral Commission for a work that is incomplete. And indeed, if you look at the step that they have got into, nothing shows that they have exhibited uh, any level of excellence in, in, in their line of duty. Let, let me, let me clarify that, this. We think that they... we must hold, I, we, the NDC think that we must hold the Electoral Commission more accountable. Mm. There are issues, line of responsibilities that they have been given. And they must be held accountable at each point of the way. We shouldn't measure this, them with a bar of mediocrity. At this where point, we at this point with 14 days... Paper, so we should just commend them for a good job done. No. At this point with 14 days to go, I understand that the parties have been giving copies of the voters' register, true? Yes, that is the point I'm making. Okay. That our preliminary analysis of the register proves or shows that there are some people who are on the special voters' register and are also on the certified register. And that is problematic. Well, that would, that be, would that be the first time <laughs> would that be the first time that is happening? That would be the first time in the history of this country that you are having a situation where somebody is voting on the special voters list and the name mm. is still in the main register. Because when you go on the voter register list, you are put on the absentee list. Now the absentee list is presented at the police station together with the certified register. When your name is on the special voters list and your name is not on the absentee list, but rather on the certified register, then it means that somebody, either deliberately, is doing that so that you'll be able to vote twice in the election. Or this is a grievous, incompetent mistake, which will lead into, you know, undermining the integrity of the election. But, 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 isn't, it, but, but isn't it, Mr. Token, isn't it impossible with the biometric system we have even if you find yourself on the register you have and then the special voting list to vote twice because the system will simply fish you out. Absolutely not. And I'm sure Mr. Ahim will bear me out. The biometric verification device are designed, activated for one single day, 24 hours. After that, it is completely deactivated. Now, when it is activated, it means that the, the registered voters in that particular police station are those who have been put on that particular BVD device for that particular police station. After 24 hours, it goes null and void. Nobody or, or no action on it, you know, uh, uh, can be repeated or can be compared. What will happen on 7th of December is completely different from what will happen on 1st of December. The system that will work on 7th of December will be completely different from the systems that will work on 1st of December. So if you have voted on the 1st of uh, uh, December and your name is still on the register and they can scan your QR code, it means that you can also vote in the 7th December election. Can I, can I get some clarity? Let, let me get some clarity on this from Mr. Ahim because he's used to work there as director of operations. Mr. Ahim, clarify that for yeah. me. Is it true that if what... Mr. Tokuno is saying that indeed there are people on the register they've, been, they've been giving, but also on the special voting list. They can indeed vote twice if they want to? No, I think from what happened at the IPAC meeting the other day, <clears throat> the explanation was given by the 
Deputy Chairman of Prison, that they've really consulted the people concerned in that particular uh, action, mm -hmm. and that their names, those that are affected, will have their names put on the absent voters' list. Mm. Honestly, anybody who is going to be <coughs> on the uh, special voters' list, will be put on the absent voters list for the entire population of those who are going to do special vote. Mm. So definitely, pains will be taken to put the names of the people who are going to be on the special vote and to be put on the absent voters list. So the chance of you going again to vote on the 7th might not occur. The EC took pains to explain this. But anybody whose name is on the special voters list will be placed on the absent voters list. So you cannot... For example, on the day of the election, that is the 1st uh, December, if you have in mind that you are going to vote and travel to maybe another place, you will go there and find that your name is on the absent voters list. And so you cannot vote. That is what I got from, from the electoral the, the the commission explanation. And okay. then let me explain this again. Okay. Yes, there was another one about the 500 of T plus people. Um, the EC was saying that for no reason they cannot fathom the. the they cannot, you know, imagine how their names didn't get into the database. So what they are going to do is that they've gone deep down their archives and they have their Form 1A. They've taken all the documents of these people and they are going to distribute them to their various polling stations countrywide. Mm. And the parties are also going to be informed. I think these names will be put on their website. The people themselves can also assess it and know that this is what has happened to them. So when they get there, they have their Form 1A or there already, who should be brought out, and then it will be confirmed because their pictures definitely will be on the Form 1A. And then they will be made to go through the manual verification process. In fact, uh, they don't want to disenfranchise them because they have genuinely confirmed that they are on the voter roll. Mm -hmm. Except that they cannot trace their names on the, on the list. So this is the arrangement they have made for them. That their Form 1As are there physically. So they are going to use it, and they will use the manual application to let them vote. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> Mr. Tokolo, stay with me. Um, uh, Ms. Ahin also. I want to bring in now um, Evan Stemako, who is just joining us uh, via Zoom uh, right now. Mr. Mr. Nemako, thank you for your time here on PM Express. You just joined us, but we're uh, briefly assessing where the EC is wait 14 days, exactly two weeks, to the elections. We've had the uh, NDC's assessment. The Codeo believes and agrees with the EC's assessment that they are 97% uh, ready for the polls. What is the MPP's verdict on the e our preparedness for December 7? Thank you, my brother, and good evening to your viewers. Uh, for us as New Patriotic Party, we are set for the elections come December 1 and December 7. What we've been monitoring so far, the actions of the EC, I think that in the just uh, submitted pre-election survey by the CDD, majority of Ghanaians rated the, the EC or the higher mark. But for us, uh, we are monitoring activities based on what the CI stipulates, the eight one and then the 127. We are preparing ourselves to ensure that, come what may, you will reach out to the voter and canvas for our presidential candidate and our parliamentary candidate. We think that in terms of our engagement with the EC, the EC has been much open and uh, we've made demands where appropriate and we are still engaging. The last IPAC that was held last week, uh, we asked questions and we sought explanations from the EC. I heard Mr. Ahin mentioning of the uh, uh, voter population 541, that they could not trace them to the biometric database, but they've made arrangements to ensure that they could also go through and vote manually. That aside, uh, we know of the voter population and the voting centers across the nation. And so we are getting ourselves ready. We are preparing our agents. We make sure that we are well represented in all these centers. 
and, and ensure that the elections is conducted in a manner as uh, defined by law. Yeah. I mean, t tell me this. I mean, the EC says you are 97% prepared. You share in that confidence. You share that you, you, you believe the EC is in, indeed that prepared for the polls? Well, I mean, uh, today, 14 days to D-Day. Today is almost gone. So we are 13 days to D-Day. Yeah. Uh, we are aware that uh, ballot papers have been sent mm -hmm. to the regional uh, armories. We were told this afternoon that the EC will have to print again uh, Fija Kwabri South uh, mm. ballot because of some uh, challenges on it. Mm. Yeah, so, yes, uh, work is ongoing. But as I said, it involves uh, making sure that all your ballot papers are in place. They've been sent to all appropriate centers. You've engaged all the ad hoc staff that you need. Your other materials are ready. And then we are getting there. But for us also as New Patriotic Party, we are saying that we are almost ready and praying that uh, December 7 will come uh, for the people of Ghana to show their acceptance and endorsement of His Excellency Nana Dodanka Ekufado's administration. Okay, um, Mr. Tokuno, so on that subject of the possibility of people voting twice, um, we got clarity from Mr. Ahin, who says, from the EC's explanation, that appears impossible. Uh, does that well, um, address the issues for you? Well, Ivans, I think that Mr. Ahin is losing the point. Um, the point I am making is not to <clears throat> dispute the fact that if you are on the special voters list, you will go on absent voters list. I am talking about a reality, a case, where the special voters has been given to us. The absentee list has been given to us. The registered, the certified voters too have been given to us. And there is a case where the names have been found on the special voters list. And those names are on the main register, not the absentee list. So we raised the point there. If Mr. Hain was <laughs> following the meeting very well, you will realize that the EC said that okay, they will quickly send the IT team to scan the system and see if they can identify that anomaly and see how it can be rectified. So the issue is not about whether you, you, you are on a sentient list and you will not be able to vote. We are saying that the device that they use, when you vote on the 1st of December and the device or the information on the device is deactivated, it is not relevant anymore. On the 7th of December, if you find your name on the voter register, with your QR code, you can still go through the process and vote without any hindrance at all. Mm. And that mm -hmm. is basic. Mr. Mr. Ayin should know that. And I'm sure my brother, uh, uh, Ivan, see if he would be truthful, will, know, will, will say that. Because we were there when they presented how the device works to us. And they assured us that the device works for only 24 hours. After 24 hours, every information on it is deactivated and it is not relevant anymore. So if you have used the device on the 1st of December, when you come and use it on the 7th of December, it will not detect you. Mm. Bear in mind yeah. that it may not even be the same police station because yeah. the special voters, the special uh, voting, they are moving some people from their original police station to go and vote in the special voting. Yeah, okay. Let, 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 so let me see. In let me see. Police station, their names will appear on absentee you know, list. Yeah, that I mean, also in this uh, IPAC meeting, of course, Evans Nemako, do you, that concern that the NDC has raised with the register you were giving and the fact that people find themselves on, you know, in two areas at the same time, voters register, special uh, voting voters list, and the possibility that one person can vote twice. Is there a concern that you have also? also? Mr. Nemako, can you hear me? Mr. Nemako, can you hear me? He doesn't appear to hear me. I want to take a quick break. When I return, we'll talk about the uh, publication of the votes register online, which has become a topical uh, subject. The EC says you're addressing uh, the press tomorrow on that and other issues. Stay with me. And yes, we have 14 days to that big day. The D-Day, the election day, it's been coming for four years and it is almost upon us. And tonight, 
we are looking at where we are, political parties, observers, the Electoral Commission, ahead of that big elections in 14 days. One big thing has happened in the last uh, 48 or so hours when it comes to the elections. It is the publication online of the voter, re voter register with your details in it. It has generated a fair bit of controversy um, with many objecting to it, some supporting it. Um, the EC itself hasn't said anything about it yet, but we are waiting for that tomorrow. Let me bring in my guest, Evans Demarco, Director of Elections, uh, Electric, uh, the EC of the MPP. Also with me is um, uh, Mr. Peter Bomo, Tokuno General Secretary, Deputy of the NDC, and uh, Abe Ahin, National Coordinator of the Coderio, Coalition of Domestic Election Observers. Mr. Demarco, um, what, what do you make of that publication online? I mean, where do you stand on that debate? Um, the EC hasn't owned it yet. We don't know if they published it, but it was available online. You could search your detail and find it. Did you approve of it? I think you've muted your, your, your Zoom, if you can unmute it. Yes. Great. Yes, uh, Mr. Otukuno mentioned that uh, Mr. Ahim is unable to appreciate the point he was making. I think at the IPAC meeting of 19th of this month, the NDC kept asking the question that they've identified some people's name on the on, on the on the special voters list, mm. and they are also in the main voter register. I think nothing stopped them from giving out the names that they have found to be in both registers. So they help the EC to correct where appropriate. I think we've lost that uh, feed there. I mean, but I don't want to dwell too much on this because we've exhausted it quite a bit. I mean, I want to go into that main issue that had come up. I've heard both sides on this matter. The NDC has a position on this. They think it's something that the EC must address. Kodeo has explained it. The N MPP has expressed it as well. But Mr. Nemako, that must matter. I mean, uh, your position obviously is different from theirs. And I've, I, have, I, I, I hardly see the MPP and NDC agreeing on this matter. Uh, and I don't have time, really. So let's deal with the matter at hand that I ask you. The issue about the publication of the names. What's your take on this from the M MPP? The, the CI 12791 allows the EC to provide for, for, for to all political parties the certified register and also get it published. I mean, for the first time, name reference list has been given to, to the public. Mm. I mean, it is to facilitate you even to identify where you are on the register. Mm. I mean, before we got to this stage, even when the EC was undertaking the exhibition, they came out with a short code that you could get onto it and know whether you were on the register or not. Name referencing list, I don't think it is anything strange. But, but the, difference, why, the difference between what they did when the mm -hmm. exhibition was on was that it was specific to the individual. If you want to yeah. find your name, you write, you send in the code, and then you get back a response unique to you. But in this case, everything was dumped onto a website where you can go and check my detail and know where I'm voting and other details that's in my voter ID card number. That's where the concern but, was. But what is it? Already, mm -hmm. political parties and other stakeholders, the law allows for them to be given copies by the EC upon request. Mm. So if your name is there, your voter ID, your age, and, and where you are voting, your position on the register is provided. I don't see anything wrong with it in other jurisdictions. Even in Nigeria, mm. your whole data is published at the polling station. So what is it that people are running away from? I think this is the way to ensure that level of transparency the NDC is demanding. I mean, registers have been given to political parties. Name reference list, which is part of the register that will be exhibited the day to facilitate the election management body to let you know where you are in the main register. It doesn't fall short of anything. And I'm surprised people are raising concern. I hope this one, the NDC will not raise, raise much issue about it. But the major issue is that, my brother, come what may December 7, the good people of Ghana have decided that based on excellent work by His Excellency Nanado, they're going to give him another term to ensure that Ghana is developed for NDC, whether you like it or not, their strategy. 
they will raise questions that are primary. They will not understand well, anybody. Well, Mr. Tukuno, Mr. Tukuno, Tukuno is on. on. Why, why, don't, why don't we hear him? I mean, you, you are tempted because to be... You are tempted to be speaking for him. I want to hear him himself on this matter. Mr. Because Tokuno, at IPAC, at IPAC, if you, hold, if you, hold, if you hold on, if you hold on for him, Mr. Mr. Demarco, Mr. Tokuno, on this subject, I'm sure you've seen this. So it's trended over the weekend, just all over the place. Some against it, some for it. Where do you stand? Evans, it is neither those who are against or who are for. It is rather bizarre though, that those who are supposed to know better and understand the electoral process are engrossed uh, in this unholy hypocrisy. The reason why I'm saying that is that the names reference list, you and I know that it is not for publication. If the electoral commission had wanted to publish the list of voted re voters registers, they wouldn't have published the names reference list. You know why the names reference list is provided? It is provided so that it will help you to easily identify where the voter information of an, of a registered voter is so that you can readily scan the QR code and take him through the process without stress. That is why they produce the names reference list. And I know very well that if the Electoral Commission want to put out the register, as Evans and Co. would want us to believe, they wouldn't have put out the, 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 the voter reference list. Now, I have heard the Electoral Commission come out to say that they didn't put out the voter reference list and that they are frantically investigating who released that document. I think, Evans, that should be a point that should guide us. It should be something that should guide our communication. I am surprised that the whole director of elections, uh, who should understand the electoral process, is talking like this and transparency and transparency. Indeed, we have been demanding for transparency. We have been demanding that the Electoral Commission become fair in their dealings. We have been demanding that they put some modicum of credibility on the process. But this is not the kind of transparency that, you know, we are talking about. When the Electoral mm -hmm. Commission itself doesn't know about how the document came out, I think it's a blot on the integrity mm -hmm. of the Electoral Commission. It further aggravates mm -hmm. the, the sense that we have that the Electoral Commission is incompetent because if you cannot even keep secure your, your voter reference list, and it will be leaked to the extent that you would, you would, you would have to conduct investigation from in-house to see who leaked the voter reference list, then I think it's a problem. In, in fact, the EC in says, fact, EC says in, tomorrow in we, we are, we are, they are going to address a press conference, so we'll get some further clarity. But apart from knowing the details about how this got published, the, what about the concept of publishing the information under the voters' reference list of the voters' register publicly so everybody else can access it as it's happened. Do you support that at least, that, that concept? That idea? Yes, we have been demanding events for some level of transparency. You know, after the exhibition, there are a lot of people who did not have the opportunity to go and do the exhibition. So putting the, some form or some part of the register out it's very crucial for people to know mm. that they are still on the register. Mm. But when you decide to put the register out, you don't put certain portions of the register out. S such as? Now, such what, as. Was, what, what was released, what was released is the voter reference list. It has the age of, 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 of the individuals who have registered, where they fall on the register itself. And I know that any serious-minded electoral official will not release a register with those information, especially the date of birth. You understand? Because it date has data birth. protection issues. It has data protection issues. Yeah. And those yeah. issues yeah. will come out because you are putting somebody's information out there, including his or her date of birth and age, without the person's knowledge. And I know that the Electoral Commission have lawyers. Jane Mensah herself is a lawyer. And I doubt if she would commit I mean, that. I mean, you know, Mr. Nomaka, what, what about that seeing, point? What about what that point about the data that, protection question and the other matters that were a part of the publication? Is, is, can you come again, Ivan? Sorry, Mr. Nomaka, uh, that question is to you. Yes. The, the other questions yes. about data protection and the information, uh, age, where you're voting, etc., that came up that people said, mm -hmm. is sensitive to me. I need to have a say in whether or not you publish that detail? Evans, I mean, there's a law. The CI-91 
If you look at Revelation 27, 3. What does it say? What does it say? It says that... That CI-91 has been outlawed, if you care to know. Oh, please. please. CI-91 is no more a law. And you are the director lawyers. of elections. You don't know that CI-91 is no more a law. Consult your lawyers. You don't know that CI-91 is no more a law. We have CI-126 and 127. Consult your you lawyers. You do not know. Consult your lawyers. In 2016, we went to the contest with CI-91 hey, and CI-94. Hey, Currently, this election point. is being governed by CI-126 okay, and 127. This is a factual point, so we need to get it right. Um, the yes. CI you quoted, uh, Mr. Demarco, has it been outlawed? Is, has it been replaced by another CI? If we check CI... I think we've lost him. I have, Mr. I have, um, thankfully, I have Kodeo's national coordinator on the line. He can clarify this for us. Um, Mr. Abed Ahim, just briefly on that point, that CI he quoted, is it still in existence or has it been outlawed? Just clarify that for us. Hello, Mr. Ahing. Okay. Mr. Ahing doesn't have my attention, I believe. Mr. Ahing is still there? Okay, great. Well, Mr. Nemak, are you back? Imans. Okay, well, let, let me end with um, Imans, Mr. Tukuno, it is, if he's still there. It is there rather with me. surprising. It is rather surprising that we lost Evans at that point. Yes, okay, Evans is back. Evans, 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 Evans is back. Evans. Mr. Nemako, Mr. Nemako you, have, you have a minute. Yes. The, on the subject yes. of that law, of that CI. I'm saying that you make reference to CI 91, Revelation 27, 3. After the register has been certified, it shall be published in a manner determined by the commission and shall re replace any existing voters' register. Mm. I'm saying that if Mr. Otukono doesn't know, the only portion in the CI-91 that was repealed, that got into motion, CI-126, was the portion to determine your eligibility. So it doesn't make CI-91 <laughs> out of use. If you care to know, that's what I'm saying, consult. The only portion that was repealed was the fact that you could not use your old voter ID card, but you could only use mm -hmm. your Ghana ID card or use a guarantor. And then the appropriate schedules were changed. That was all about it. So I'm saying that if you check CI 91, Regulation 27.3, the EC has the law to publish the register in a manner that he determines. That notwithstanding, if name referencing list is published by the EC, it doesn't sort any law. And the NDC must get it clear. Mm -hmm. Eva, Eva. Okay. Left to the NDC, December 7th will not come. They can make all the noise. They've done all this and they have not gotten it. In so actual fact, we want December East. 7th to come early because you are going home. You have lost the, this election the, the and you know that. That is why you are using all this surreptitious means to rig the election. What kind of we know you have lost this so election. Long. You okay. have lost this election. So that is why you are using all this repetitious so, means to so, rig the so, election. So, 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 gentlemen, the will of the people will prevail. It's in oppression. You don't know. You the, have no the idea. The will of the people will prevail. And, okay. and you see, when we, you see, so, 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 so gentlemen, I, I, I have, you, I have run out of time no, on this, but I, I want to quickly, Mr. Tukun, if you don't mind, I lost, I lost briefly, Mr. Evans, Mr. Ahin, on the line. I understand he's back. Is he? Uh, Evans, you have to maybe increase your voice a little bit can, for me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can, you, can you hear me, Mr. Ahim? Yes, I think I'm, I'm hearing you now. Um, CI 95, is this still um, C, a CI that is, has it been outlawed or is still active? Yeah, the, the, the CI that you are talking about has been abrogated. And in its place has been put this CI 126 and 127 that Otokono was talking about. Okay, so. so, but so see, my, my problem is that. About this uh, idea of uh, putting the register yes out. What's your what's your position? Or whatever it is. If you are going to give registers to a whole political party, then what what protection are we talking about? You see, you are publishing the whole. My only concern is about the the name reference list that was also added. I, I think that is wrong, and I'm sure that is the reason why the is trying to find out who did that. 
But if the EC is going to give registers to all political parties, and if there are about 25 of parties that we have in this country, it's like putting it in the library. Like we have in other jurisdictions. But, what, 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 to, but what about publishing uh, it online? Are you, are you with me? Yes. But what about yes, publishing it, it online? It's online, yes. It's, it's, it's something, of course, that online might not be having all the details that we are talking about. But I, for example, have seen in other jurisdictions where you visit a library and you have the voter roll there, where somebody can quickly sit and find out so, whether he's ready. So, Mr. Hain, if you don't, don't mind clarifying your position, so you are okay if the EC publishes the voters register, but not the reference list? That's it. That is it. Okay. I'm, I'm grateful, gentlemen. I'm grateful. I mean, this is 14 days. We are going to have a series of conversations. So, Mr. Tokuno and Mr. Nemako, I'm definitely sure that we're going to have this conversation again. On the back of the EC's press conference tomorrow, I'm pretty sure we'll get into a bit, of, a bit more of this um, going forward. That will be 13 days to go. This is your election headquarters. This is PM Express. Enjoy the rest of your evening.